Hello, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to write a file to the SPIFS file system of the SPA266 using the Arduino core. As target board I'm going to be using a Fire Beetle board from DFRobot. Note that in this tutorial we are just going to focus on the writing procedure, but in the next tutorial we are going to learn how to read content from a file. So, to get started with the code, the first thing we are going to do is including this fes.h library, like we did in the previous tutorial to uh, cover the procedure of mounting the SPIFS file system, because it will expose to us the API we need to both mount the file system and later uh, to open the file for writing, which is the procedure that we are going to focus here. So, uh, as we also seen in the previous tutorial, upon including this fes.h library, we have access to this spiffs extern variable that will expose to us the basic methods to do these procedures, but we'll cover that in a minute. So moving on to the setup where we will write the rest of our code, uh, we start as usual by opening a serial connection to output the results of our program, and then we'll take care of mounting the spiffs file system. As mentioned in the previous tutorial, we always need to mount the SPIFS file system first uh, before we try to interact with it. And then we can do here an error check because it returns this begin method returns a Boolean variable indicating if the procedure was successful or not. And we'll do an error check here to see if the procedure went well or not. Note that if the procedure failed, we are returning uh, because there's no point in trying to interact with the file system because it won't work. Then, uh, moving on to the to the latest part of the code, uh, what we need to do to write a file is first we need to open it. So we call this open method on our spiffs extern variable, and this uh, will pretty much uh, open the file. And this method receives as first input uh, the path to the file, which, as you, we can see here, it contains here this forward slash, uh, indicating that we are. Uh, creating this file in the root directory of the SPIFS file system and the name of the file that we are calling file.txt. A second argument of this open method, we need to, to pass uh, the opening mods. And in this case, since we are opening the file for writing, uh, we pass here this uh, w because it basically indicates that we want to open it for writing. As output, this method will return uh, a file object and we'll be using this file object to write the actual content uh, to our file. So we are uh, naturally storing this here in a, in a variable because we are going to interact with it uh, below. But before we uh, jump in writing content to the file, we are going to do here an error check uh, to see if we could successfully open this file for writing. So this file class overloads the C++ boolean operator, uh, which means that we can uh, use an if condition around this, uh, this object, uh, and pretty much it will check if the file was open uh, with success or not. So if we apply the boolean operator here to this file object, and if it returns false, it means that there was an, an error opening the file, uh, in this case for writing, and again, there's no point in trying to continue to write content to the file, uh, because we know that the procedure has failed. So, as uh, just to sum up, we first open it uh, for writing, and here we do an error check to make sure everything uh, went well. Then, assuming that everything went well, uh, we will try to write the content to the file. In order to write content to the file, we can use this print method on our file object, passing as input uh, a string with the content we want to write. In our case, we are going to write this test spiffs uh, string, so this is just a uh, basic testing string, you can write here wherever you want, uh, and it should write the content to the file if everything goes well. Note that as output of this method call, um, we will receive an integer indicated how, indicating how many bytes were written to the file. So we are going to store this here in a variable, and in our case we are going to do an error check to see if uh, the content that we tried to write was successfully written to the file or not. Note that here we are doing a very simple error checking, so we are assuming that uh, if at least more than one byte, more than zero in this case, so at least one or more bytes were written to, to the file, everything went well, but obviously for a more robust error checking, we could uh, check if exactly the number of bytes that we want to write uh, to the file were effectively written. But for the sake of simplicity here, we are just checking if at least uh, one or more bytes were written, everything went well. 
So in case everything went well, we indicate here that the file was written and uh, we print here the number of files written so we can confirm uh, how many bytes were, were indeed uh, written as content of the file. Uh, otherwise, in case it fails, we print here a message so the user knows that uh, writing to the file has failed. So after this point, if everything goes goes well, uh, the file should uh, should have been written. Uh, and then to finalize, we just need to, to call this close method on our file in order to close the file and free the resources. And that's it. This is the procedure to write uh, content to a file on the SPIFS file system. It is very simple. Uh, and in the next tutorial, not here, we, here we just wanted to focus on the writing procedure, but in the next tutorial, we are going to learn how to read the content of a file in the SPIFS file system, which is something natural that we might also want to do. Note that here the loop function is left empty because for this simple tutorial, we are not going to do anything else. So, I've already uploaded the, um, this code for my uh, device. I'm going to reset the device and it is going to run again. And as you can see here, the first message that we get is that the file system mounted with success, uh, which means that from this point onward, the code to write the file should run. And then we get here this message indicating that the file uh, was written. And then we get here 11 bytes, which pretty much uh, matches the, the size of the content we wanted to, to, to write to the file. So in this case, we know that everything went well. That's it. The procedure for writing the file uh, is very simple. And again, we are going to cover in the next tutorial how to read the content to, uh, from a file in the SPIFS file system. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed.